Welcome to the show. Great to have you with us. Today's show brought to you by Best One Tire and Service of Richmond. High school football season is back, and I'll tell you what, if there is a guy that's been busy, it's been this guy to my left, Abe Tofik is joining us. He'll be with us every week to talk Richmond football. I feel like you've almost put in a season already. I thought about that on the way over here, yeah. that I'm going to introduce you, but you've been doing so much so for the last several months. Do you kind of feel like you put in a whole year already? Uh, I wouldn't say a whole year, you know, I, I just feel like I've hit the ground running yeah. and, um, you know, it, it's kind of what I wanted to do and in order to rebuild a football program and have a successful season, I had to get in and get right to work and yeah. that's pretty much what we did. So, yeah. I mean, I haven't had any time to sit down and stop, I will say that much. Yeah, I, we were talking a little bit before we started the show that I, I kind of know what you go through because when it's new, you, you get it, can I get everything done? And it's almost seems like impossible, but you said you kind of take a step back and take yeah. a little bit of a, a breather about it and just yeah. kind of get off by yourself and yeah. get your thoughts together, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And you know, it also, you have to prioritize things. Yeah. Um, you know, with, with my role here, being in charge of the high school program, the middle school program, and the hub league program, that, that's a lot of programs to run. Yeah. And um, there's only, a, you know, so many hours in a day and uh, my main focus right now has been, you know, the high school team and getting these guys ready to start playing, you know, and uh, this is when it really counts. Um, but you're right, you know, at the end of the day, I go home, my wife is so considerate, she allows me to kind of just, you know, take my time and decompress every, you know, and just go through all my thoughts throughout the day. and. You know, after I get about an hour or two, I'm usually back to normal. Yeah, good thing yeah. I've been understanding wife, huh? Yeah, thank God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know the feeling there, too. It takes a, a good woman behind you. Yes, I mean, it does. It, it really does. Yeah. I mean, she's got to understand a lot. Kickoff coming up on Friday night. Coach, uh, you went through the scrimmage. Yeah. Talk a little bit about the good, the bad, the ugly, as they yeah. say. And, and yeah. it was a scrimmage, but you got a chance to get out there against somebody yeah. else. Yeah. And, you know, we got a chance to get out there against somebody else and actually get some live bullets flying at you, full tackle to the ground. Um, you know, I kind of wanted to see how our kids reacted. Uh, and Pendleton Heights looks like they've made some improvements yeah. in the past year. They had some pretty good looking kids out there. Uh, kids that played hard and played tough. And, um, you know, I think we roasted to the, to the, to the occasion. and. Uh, Rose to the challenge. We'll be fine going forward. You know, one thing when we had our post game interview, I didn't even realize at the time, didn't realize it until getting back and speak with my coaches on the bus ride home and everything that every single one of our starters at the skill position on offense are first year varsity football players. No kidding. Yeah, yeah. so our quarterback, Brandon Curtis, hadn't, hasn't played a meaningful game in a number of years. Um, our wide receiver, Treshawn Jones, first year starter, O'Shea Henderson, didn't play last year. Tramel Carpenter didn't play last year. Jarrell Deloney was a JV guy. Uh, Wyatt Bird was a JV guy. So uh, I expect there were some nerves. And, and yeah. you know, really when I put it in perspective now, I think we did pretty well yeah. um, with all things considered. Um, but I expect a big improvement. You know, we got those butterflies out of our stomach and got hit by another team. and. <laughs> Um, you know, the kids have just been really, really pumped up to go as hard as they can go when it really counts. And it's going to count on Friday night. It will count on yeah. Friday night. We'll talk about Connorsville coming up in just a couple of moments. I've got to ask you, from, a, from Brandon's standpoint, just he's had a chance now throughout the summer, working hard, being a part of your football program and stepping in, as you said. And he said he was nervous, admittedly, after the game when I talked to him. Yeah. His command of the offense, what did you like? What didn't you like? What has he got to do to get ready for the first game? Um, one of, some of the things I liked is, you know, number one, he's getting guys lined up properly and, and you know, slowing things down a little bit, not rushing into the snap count. Um, you know, some of the things we have to improve on are just his foot mechanics. The ball sailed on him a couple of times. His elbow was a little low. His legs were a little too wide. The little things that make a big difference, you know, yeah. the things that we preach on a daily basis around here and that we have to get better at. I told the kids, you know, we've got a lot of great athletes, but we don't have very many good football players right yeah. now. And uh, we just got to become better football players and work at that every single day and, you know, look at it as perfecting your craft. And, um, 
you know, so that's, that's kind of our focus and mentality on a day-to-day -day basis, improve your craft, get better. And uh, I think Brandon is going to show signs of improvement every game this year. You know, it's going to take a little while and, you know, the bright lights come on and the, the crowd comes out and those butterflies start going from your stomach to your throat and your heart starts <laughs> pounding a little faster, sweat a little bit more. And, um, you know, I think once he calms down and, you know, I think he's going to be really, really good for us and uh, going to lead us to a uh, overachieving season this year. I thought you were talking about me in the broadcast booth there for a minute because sometimes I kind of <laughs> feel like that that first game yeah. out. Yeah. Wyatt runs the ball hard, doesn't he? Yes, he does. No, I, we love Wyatt. Yeah. Again, strongest pound for pound kid we have on our team. One of the hardest working kids I've ever coached. You know, and I've coached a lot of a lot of really good, talented, hard working kids. And I tell you what, man, that kid puts in work like I've never seen anybody else. Um, and so we, we expect Wyatt. I mean, I'm, I'm expecting a big season out of him. We're going to just hand him the ball and let, you know, our offensive line open some holes for him and really get him going. And, you know, when we went back and evaluated the tape, um, I think we didn't really run it as much as we would have liked to. Mm -hmm. But we really wanted to get a, a look at the passing game and yeah. how would Brandon – you know, react with live bullets and how would our wide receivers, you know, do, um, you know, their first time really being out there against varsity competition and live action. Um, but Wyatt, the, the few carries that he got, you know, he busted a couple of uh, runs that were really, really solid runs and carried the ball for us well. So, um, you know, you should expect to see a heavy dosage of Wyatt Bird all season long. Yeah, I like him. Yeah. Your receivers are big. Some yeah. of, I mean, I was yeah. really surprised I'm standing next to them on the sidelines, and those are some big kids. Yeah, I mean, you know, Treshawn Jones is six foot three, you know, good 185 pounder, yeah. good long, you know, limbs, runs well, catches it. Probably the best high pointer I've ever seen in terms of just going up and high pointing the ball. Good. Uh, you know, great athlete. And O'Shea Henderson is built like a rock. I mean, yeah. he looks like a tight end, but he runs like a wide receiver. Yeah. And um, so that kind of gives us a, a matchup issue for some teams where we could, you know, later on in the season, we get, you know, uh, comfortable enough in what we're doing offensively. You know, we can bump him down at tight end and, you know, get him one-on-one -on -one with a linebacker, or we can yeah. split him wide if we've got a smaller cornerback and put him one-on-one -on -one with one of those guys. And, so we're going to look at the matchups week in and week out and, you know, utilize the talent that we have and try to win as many games as possible. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, I haven't seen receivers in Richmond that big yeah. in a long time. Yeah. So those are nice weapons to have. Absolutely. Let's talk some defense. Yeah. Uh, what would you see on Friday night? Uh, I, I, you know, you got some guys that can really stop the run and mm -hmm. you got some speed at those linebacker positions and such and saw some good things there too. Yeah, yeah. I'm a, I'm a defensive-minded guy. You know, I played defense in college mm -hmm. and I believe in the philosophy that defense wins championships. And um, so, you know, my philosophy is we're going to take our best players and we're going to play them on defense. And uh, we've got, you know, Ron Bubba Sanders, who I would probably say is probably our most talented overall football player. Just speed, athleticism, he'll hit you. I mean, he can get the ball and you, know, you never know. I mean, touch it and he's going the distance. Yeah. You know, you think it may be a five yard gain and boom, he's running 90 yards on you. Um, so, you know, along with him and Bryce Brown, you know, I think those two guys are really going to be the leaders and the captains of our defense and uh, get everybody lined up properly. And, you know, uh, we're going to run around, we're going to hit you, and we're going to have fun doing it. We're going to send a lot of different pressure packages, try Good. to – pressure the quarterback and get sacks for those guys and um, you know we had some turnovers I we were really really confident in Stefan Huber at the cornerback position and Julian Holguin the, yeah. those two guys are really really good cornerbacks and yeah. uh, we think that we're you know we can match them up one-on-one -on -one with receivers and then keep everybody else inside the box to really stop the run and you know, I think we're going to be fine there. We, we need to improve a little bit on the defensive line. Okay. Got a lot of younger uh, kids in there that haven't played a lot of football yet. Um, one that really stood out was Jackson Haynes playing okay. nose tackle for us. He had a really, really good game and got better as the game progressed. So I think, 
He'll be a really solid piece to that puzzle for us down there on the defensive line. Connor Necessary mm -hmm. showed some flashes at times. Um, so we've got, you know, we're still doing some fine tuning with the defense, but overall those guys are running around, they're hitting people, uh, cre you know, created some turnovers. Yeah. Um, you know, we want our defense to be the number one defense in the NCC. Yeah. Special teams, something we don't talk very much about, but boy, I tell you, Wixon, Yeah. What do you see in your special teams this year? You know, special teams, we haven't really showed it on film yet, but uh, my special teams philosophy is, you know, we're going to keep it simple and we're putting our best guys on the field. I'm not a coach who believes in, you know, playing JV kids on uh, varsity special teams or anything like that. So, you know, our special teams, you're going to see Ron Sanders, you're going to see Bryce Brown, you're going to see uh, Treshawn Jones, you're going to see Jarrell Deloney, Wyatt Bird, you know, a lot of our starters, they're going to be mixed in there um, with some kids who are in the rotation, mm -hmm. you know, maybe not be a number one guy at this point, but, you know, we feel confident enough that if somebody goes down or, you know, needs a breather that we can plug those kids in and won't have any drop in performance. Um, so, you know, special teams wise, we're just going to keep it simple. Um, you know, we're not really going to go for a whole bunch of block punts or we're, you know, uh, we got Ron Bubba Sanders back there. Yeah. I want to set up the return, get the ball in his hands, let him return the football and hopefully something special happens. Um, kickoff wise, you know, Stefan Huber is our kicker and he's putting it, you know, to about the 10 yard line every time good. and really good with his placement. Um, you know, Jarrell Deloney's our punter, so that gives us a little bit of athleticism there. And so, you know, we may run some fake punts in situations, but for the most part, you know, we, we need to punt the ball. We're just going to line up. We're going to punt it. We're going to run down, make a tackle, and put our defense in a position to get us the ball back and, you know, continue playing football. So yeah. those hidden yardage, we're going we're gonna to preach the hidden yardage, you know, and, and winning the hidden yardage battle. Um, typically, teams who win the hidden yardage win the football game. Yeah, so, very um, true. you know, we practice special teams um, at least for 25 minutes a day in practice. Yeah. So. Yep, I've been there. I see it. Yeah, yeah you work yeah. on it really yeah. well. So, yeah. all right, tell you what, game one coming up on Friday night. When we come back, we'll talk about what to expect, not only from the Red Devils, but also Connorsville. We'll do that coming up next right here on Radio Troy Digital Sports. Best One Tire and Service has been committed to our partners since 1948. With more than 250 locations in 26 states, Best One puts over a million tires on the road every year. Superior tires, expert service, competitive prices. Best One Tire and Service, where the best costs less. Hi, I'm Roger Clark with Best One of Richmond. Because Best One is one of Bridgestone's largest retailers, we offer exclusive Bridgestone savings. Visit us in Richmond to save on Bridgestone Tires today. Welcome back to the show. Again, Connorsville coming up at Leibold Field Friday night. Kickoff time is at 7. Our pregame coverage will begin at 6.30. Coach, uh, it's hard at the beginning of a year to know what another team does. I guess you get a little bit of a look at them in the scrimmage, Connorsville. Yeah. But you don't see everything because everybody kind of stays vanilla. What do you know right. about them coming into Friday night? Uh, you know, we know that they have some, some good, you know, kids who play hard. And, um, they're going to run the football, you know, it's three yards in a cloud of dust. Yeah. And, um, you know, they're going to run a 3-3 three, three stack on defense. Aside from that, you know, honestly, I don't really concern myself too much with Connorsville or, you know, other teams. I'm, I'm more of a philosophy of, um, you know, we are, we're the only team that can stop us. Right. You know, yeah. that, that's really my philosophy. If we come out there, we're playing our best football. Um, Connorsville doesn't have a chance. You know, now if we go out there and we underestimate our opponent and mm -hmm. we don't play up to our ability, then we could get into a dogfight. Yeah. You know, I mean, they are, uh, they've got a bunch of kids who play hard and, you know, they're going to run around and hit you. Um, but, you know, in terms of just the overall athleticism that we have here at Richmond, they don't have on film. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I'm not really concerned about their wide receivers running past us unless we get undisciplined and have our eyes in the backfield and, yeah. you know, they run some play action and get behind us that way. So I'm not really concerned about, you know, them running past us or preventing us from running past them. You know, yeah. will we be able to throw the deep ball and complete it? Yeah. Know, will we be able to hold up and pass protection long enough for Brandon to, 
get the ball downfield to our receivers? You know, will we be able to run the football? Are we going to be drive blocking those guys, you know, out of there? Um, the way we practice versus how they practice, I'm sure, is a little bit different just because of the type of offense they run. Mm -hmm. So they'll probably be a little bit more stout against the run because all they do is run the football on offense. Yeah. Um, so that's what you practice against day in and day out. You kind of get used to that. But, um, you know, I don't think that they're going to have much success against us on the edges when we get the ball out to our wide receivers in space. Uh, I think they're gonna, we're going to create some mismatch issues for them there. Um, and as long as our defense can stop the run, we'll, we'll be fine. Yeah. yeah. The, and, and from their standpoint, like you say, you're concerned more about what you guys are able to do. It is, it's not maybe a rivalry as much in football, but they still want to come up here and what a way to open up the years, come to Richmond and get a win here, right? Right, right. Well, um, they're going to be in for a long night. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Richmond fans like to hear that, by the way. They're going to be in for a long night. Uh, you know, we, we want them to come in here and, and give us their best shot, yeah. you know, uh, because they're going to get ours. Yeah. And um, our goal is to uh, make a statement in this first game. It's going to be my first game as the head coach of Richmond High School. Not only that, it's a home game, so yeah. it's a double whammy. Um, so we're, we're coming out to make a statement. We're working hard this week. We've had a good day of practice so far, and um, I'm ready for Friday night. I am too. Yeah. Coach, good to see you again. Thank you very much. Of course, we'll see you next week, okay? Yes, sir. Again, we want to remind you, be there early and let's uh, have a lot of fun. I think the atmosphere is going to be great. I know we're all looking forward to a brand new football season, and Abe, I've watched enough practices now, and he's got them going, and they're excited about a new high school football season. Again, we'll be on the air at 630, and our kickoff time is at 7. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you next week right here on Radio Troy Digital Sports.